Hi, I'm Dave. Where will EV batteries end up? We've got new technology, new chemicals, everything, and it's heading in a fantastically better direction than we have at the moment. Well, welcome to Dave Takes It On. Stick around as Dave takes on where are we likely to see batteries ending up in our EVs in the near future. Well, again, we've got to look back at the early days. Where did the batteries come from? Uh, they were just old batteries, not old. I mean, they were designed uh, a long time ago for a different purpose. So the initial batteries that Tesla used or VW used or anyone used, and even the Chinese, were ones that were already being made by the battery companies. And these were batteries that were going into things like laptops, power tools, mobility scooters, um, all sorts of things, um, um, anything that has a battery in it, uh, it was normally these batteries. And so the EV industry, when it started, uh, they simply took what was available at the time. And they weren't that good. They're not being used anymore. Mine's probably got some of the oldest batteries around. Some of the Nissan Leafs and uh, Renault Zoe's have some of the older batteries around. These were never meant for putting into EVs. Now, some of them were even worse in that they were prone to catching fire. Uh, they don't anymore. And those old ones have now all been replaced. They were just too dangerous to leave out there. But they didn't know at the time that that could happen. Nowadays, although you've seen uh, EV fires in the past, the number of those starting now is very much reduced. And that's because the battery technology has moved on and we no longer use batteries that are liable or even able to catch fire. Uh, LFP batteries, for example. Most of the cars out on the road now have got LFP batteries in it and it's virtually impossible to get them to catch fire. You'd have to do a massive amount of damage to the battery uh, to try and get that one to burn. So it's moved on and so what we're getting today is a very different battery than we had uh, just a few years ago or 10 years ago uh, or even coming up 15 years ago when Tesla first started, Volkswagen started in uh, 2019, some of the others BMW, I think, uh, Volkswagen had a car on the road in 2017 or something. Uh, there have been cars around for a while, but it's changing nowadays, and the batteries on offer today very much different. So you have more manufacturers now. So you have Panasonic, you have LG, you have CATL, you have BYD. Uh, loads of batteries. You get some other companies. Uh, Ford, General Motors are talking about going into partnership with existing companies to make their own. Tesla already do, and they develop their own batteries in cooperation with others who have more expertise. So what's happening is there's much greater range, uh, range of batteries, not range in distance, but a range of batteries. You've got much, a much better choice. If you're making a high performance car, you will choose a battery that is able to store more power, it's more power dense, and it can release that much quicker. If you are producing a little city runaround car that's never meant to go very far, um, you can use a, very, a battery with a very much slower rate of discharge uh, because you're never going to be burning off Ferraris at the traffic lights. So you're starting now to get purpose-built batteries for EVs and they're actually looking really good. Now, you've got to realise that a lot of this takes a long time. You can think up a battery today that battery is unlikely to be on the market in mass production within three or four years. That's how long it takes. You've got to test it. You've got to run it in cars. You've got to try and find out all the problems with it, all the advantages to it. Uh, it needs a certain amount of testing. Then when you've got that, you've got to hand it over to the factory and they've got to work out how to produce this economically and quickly and then after that you then have to start making them but of course at this point you don't have any customers for it so you now need to go out to your customers and say do you want to try these and if you've already committed yourself to a two-year contract for LFP batteries um, you may not have any scope at all for trying the new batteries even though you might want to but you might not have a scope for it for another year or two years while that contract runs. So all of this takes time, then it builds up to mass production, the prices come down, and all of a sudden everyone goes, oh yeah, now I'm ready for it, let's start using it. But of course, at this point, the next one is already being lined up for you. So we're always a, a few years behind. 
So what's happening at the moment? Well, we've got sodium batteries making an appearance. These batteries are quite amazing. The main difference is that they are cheaper. <laughs> That's it. Uh, they're not as good. They're not as power dense. They don't release the power as quickly. But for the average car that doesn't need to be able to have a 0 to 60 time of three seconds, these are great. You know, 0 to 60 time in a saloon car, five, six, seven, eight seconds, absolutely adequate. We don't need boy racers. Boy racers, if they want to buy that car, that should be available with a different battery in it called a Sport or a GT or long range or performance, whatever. And they should be able to buy that. But the bulk of the cars will go out. And for the bulk of cars, the sodium batteries are absolutely brilliant. Sodium is about a 20th of the price of lithium. Does Almost the same job, not quite as powerful, doesn't release it as quickly, but it's actually pretty good. And these cars are already through all the various developments and they're starting to appear on the road. When they appear on the road, that means they're just about to go into mass production if the industry wants them. But I have to say with sodium, if someone said, here's a lithium battery for a quid, here's a sodium one for 5p, which would you buy? Yeah, it's, these are going to take over. So at the budget end of the market, we're going to be into the longer range, the, the lower power ones, uh, decent range, um, absolutely virtually non-flammable. Uh, they've got everything going for them. Same size, still the same size batteries, uh, but that's where they're going. At the top end of the market, the performance, the GT, the boy racer end of the market. There are some new batteries coming out. Massive power, massive power. CATL have announced one. Uh, more powerful than anything else that's ever been made before. It delivers it faster um, and it's actually lighter and it's just about to enter into mass production. Not yet out there. There are batteries out there being used, but they are trial batteries. So they're just about coming out. So what we're ending up with is we're going to have a much wider choice of the EVs that we buy depending on our needs. So if you just want a second car as a little run around for dropping the kids off at school or going shopping or whatever, going to visit Aunt Mabel at the weekend, um, then go for one of the sodium ones. The battery will be cheaper, a lot cheaper. Uh, so the car will be cheaper. It'll do everything you want, everything that a Fiesta or a Corsa or a... Uh, Citroen C, uh, C1 uh, does. Um, they're not racing cars, they're just nice little run around cars, and that's what you get. For those who want the ultimate performance, uh, those will be available as well. Those will probably be at the moment looking like those new um, CATL batteries, but of course, we've got solid state coming along. And solid state is at the interim stage. They've got some working and they're looking really good. They can't yet get it working at an economical price. Anyone can build a battery, give someone a million pounds and a lab, they'll come up with a battery. But trying to make that at a competitive price and in volume, that's the problem. And Tesla found this with the 4680 cells. Uh, they've made them by hand and when you make it by hand everything's fine but as soon as you ask a machine to do that and this process speeds up it generates heat and that heat destroys the battery while you're making it and so you have to then stop it and say right we need to slow it down until we can find a way of changing the chemistry so that as it gets hotter um, it doesn't destroy the battery and this all takes time. Then when you make that one, you'll find it suddenly uh, uses twice as much material and therefore it's not financially viable. You can't sell it at twice the price, even though it might be better. And so there's a massive amount going on with solid state batteries. I am not convinced they're actually going to crack the problem, although they probably will to some degree. But I think the mass production is probably always going to be um, the Achilles heel. But what they offer, if they do ever get them going, is much faster charging, uh, much more power. Uh, so they're talking, and I think it was Polestar got one to charge full battery in five minutes. I actually filmed doing it. Uh, so these are out there, but whether they can get those mass produced at a sensible price, that's another matter. But we are going to see these specialist batteries coming in, and the batteries we look at, we, we will be looking at in one, two, or five years, are going to be nothing like they are today. My car is just so hopelessly out of date. Uh, it's still going well, love it, um, but in terms of battery technology, performance, and everything else, it's gone. So that's where we're going now. The new battery from CATL seems to be uh, 
uh, where we might be heading for the luxury end and the performance end of the EV market. So if you're making a Mercedes or a BMW, uh, um, something with a bit of go, um, you, you'll be having this battery. Uh, for the budget end of the market, you're going to be LFPs. And those LFPs will eventually e evolve into sodium batteries. Uh, so we're going to get much more range. And then over time, that even that's going to change because the batteries in five years' time will be very different than in two years' time. Uh, just if you want any proof about that, just look at your smartphone. So we can't really imagine where we're going to be in five years' time. But what I will say is we will have greater range and faster charging, but it will be at the higher end of the pricing market and we'll have slower charging batteries and... Uh, less power dense batteries but a lot cheaper at the cheaper end of the market and people then will be able to choose just like at the moment you will choose whether to buy a standard car or a deluxe car or a gt car in the future your choice will be um, sodium batteries uh, lithium ion LF, 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 lfb batteries or the catl new battery don't know so for some of us we'll never need anything more than a basic standard range some of us will want more some of us at the moment who think we want more will actually when you're faced with a price here's a, a standard range of twenty five thousand. here's a super duper long range of thirty five thousand. we'll go well i don't actually need that and they'll buy the cheaper one so uh batteries will change quite dramatically so thanks very much for watching i'm dave